welcome to the Untrapped Podcast, where we give motivational and inspirational tips about life, small business, wisdom, health, wealth, finance, relationships. It's about being the best you that you can possibly be. Possibly be, 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 be. Hashtag Untrapped. Welcome, well, welcome to the Untrapped Podcast. 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 I am your host, Keith Kelfus. What's up? I'm here with Brian's Lawn Maintenance. Brian Fullerton. What's up, dude? He's crushing it right now. What's up, guys? <laughs> so, hey, Brian and I, we're both in Michigan. We're getting some food. We're hanging out. And he asked me during dinner, Keith, so why don't you, why don't you mow lawns? Because that's what he does. I do primarily landscaping and window cleaning. And we got to talking about route density, which he's gonna share how he crushes it in the lawn care business. And it, and it really got me thinking. I was telling him the story and I wanna tell, what's up, Brian? What's up guys, how you doing? <laughs> so when I first started my landscaping business, I did, I did lawn care my whole life. So I started getting lawn accounts naturally. I bought a walk behind, I had a backpack blower, weed whip, the edger, all that stuff. And I started getting clients within a you know, six to eight mile radius. I got sick of it really quick because I had customers coming out asking me questions. There was a long drive time. It was eating up my, um, I wasn't getting the man labor hours that I needed. And I was doing all these landscape maintenance jobs too. So I noticed I was actually running out on the weekend, scrambling to cut all my lawns because I was so busy doing landscape jobs. By my third year, I was so frustrated trying to handle it all. I, I gave up my lawn accounts and I gave them to a lawn care friend, a friend of mine. I'm like, dude, you gotta, you gotta do something with these. I can't do these anymore. Because I was looking at the time, the cost on a cost benefit analysis to take it to the next level, I would have to uh, go out and finance like a nice zero turn, like a walk behind, like an, uh, an X mark and then a rider. I need a bigger trailer. I only had a small truck at that time. And my credit was shit. I didn't have any money saved up. And I said, well, I can keep doing this forever or I can just go right into higher profit landscape installs and maintenance jobs. So it was tough to do, but the second year I pulled the trigger, I got rid of the lawn accounts and immediately filled in with all this landscape work. But this guy is doing route density. We're eating dinner, which I'm, we just ate dinner. And, and I'm <laughs> it was like- It a good dinner. Dude. <laughs> you getting the burps, you know it's a good dinner if you got the burps, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so- we went to Outback for the record, okay? Dude. Fanciest uh, restaurant on his side of town. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so you said all your lawns are like in a two or three mile radius? Probably less than that, like one mile radius. So if, if you study if you study business and you study I mean, travel time, I know even on a landscape job, the mistakes that I've made was like, if you quote out a property, same amount of garden beds, but a way bigger property, you just walking back and forth, it's gonna triple your time there, right? Mm -hmm. So. Talk about route density, how to crush it in the lawn care business with route density, bro. <clears throat> There's uh, I, first off, I, I, if you guys don't know, uh, I do run a lawn care landscaping channel called Brian's Law Maintenance. Uh, I am Brian, I do exist, I'm not just an actor, you know? And uh, it's funny, uh, if you guys have watched any of my videos or if you guys do happen to jump over to my channel, um, I'm all about helping you guys grow a more successful lawn care landscaping business. Uh, we have like four or 500 videos, believe it or not. Uh, believe it or not, talking about lawn care landscaping. He's got like 45,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's crushing it. I'll put a link below to your channel too. But yeah. Sure, I appreciate that. And uh, you guys will realize really quickly that I'm just a regular dude out there trying to make uh, a name for myself as well with cutting grass. I, my, my lawn care landscaping business, I've been uh, around for 10 years. Uh, this is our 11th or 12th season. So I've learned a lot of lessons along the way. Um, I wouldn't say I have the most successful lawn care landscaping business by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, we have cleaned up, we've done pretty well. Um, I'm really happy with what I've accomplished and I think that's really important. But when it comes to lawn maintenance, uh, for a lawn maintenance business, I think there's a couple ways to approach it, but the one way that if you wanna be profitable in lawn maintenance, because I don't know if you guys have done the math or realized it, maybe you have, is that lawn maintenance, unless you have a lot of route density, it's not the most, uh, there's not the most margin and it's not the most profitable work. You know, you can spin your tires driving around town and uh, like you had just mentioned, uh, windshield time, right? Shield time, face time. 
And so, I mean, do you guys got it to the point where like you just mm -hmm. park the truck and you're going from lawn to lawn to lawn to lawn to lawn? Hundred percent. Just riding down the street to the next damn lawn. Hundred percent. So I, dope, I I did a route density video. Uh, if you go to our channel, type of route density, it'll probably come up. And I explained to a T exactly how we set up our business. It was its own dedicated 20, 25 minute video. I mean, I I hold no punches and I give out as much uh, of the tips and the secrets and everything that I've accumulated. I'll put on a that. link. I'll put a link below to that. Yeah, and, and I'm not like a, a hype guy either. I mean, literally, I run my business and that's my bread and butter. Um, but what we did was I had learned really quickly that if I was going to make money doing lawn care and lawn maintenance specifically, that we needed to get route density. And what happened was over about a four to five year window, uh, I had realized that uh, I got smart with my routes and I said, I got to start putting boundaries, you know, where my roads are, where my highways are, where my service area is. And it took uh, a few years after that to start filling in the cracks, if you will. So the biggest tip I can give people is make some hard boundaries with where you're going to start servicing. I, I've tried to order Jimmy John's before on a job site. Yeah. They're like, we don't deliver it there. I'm like, we're right across the street. 100%. 100%. Because they have hard line boundaries, right? And so because that delivery driver can make three deliveries in the same subdivision or commercial park versus driving all around town doing a little star thing, right? If the business is there. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That's the best case scenario. Right. So what we did, for example, like I'll just, I'll just give you a, a typical like Wednesday is I can drop the gate on my trailer and this is, this is awesome for us and hopefully this helps you guys, but I drop my trailer and we can do 30, 40 lawns in a day in the same subdivision. I ride the lawnmower from house to house. I've got usually a helper or two that is trimming and blowing and they drive the rig house to house as well. And we can cut 30 to 40 lawns a day, no problem. Now granted, these are subdivision lawns. These are 25 to $35 cuts, 4,000 square foot lawns. Nothing super fancy, super crazy, but where we live in Metro Detroit, Michigan, it's a lot of subdivisions. So there's many times where we're cutting 30, 40 lawns a day. And in fact, uh, about two years ago, three years ago, I picked up an HOA for the subdivision. I have 30, I think 37 or 38 lawns in there. So that's a 12 to $1,500 a day if we do it right. And with lawn care, uh, you know, it, it is one of those things where on your own, you can cut 15, 18 lawns a day with you and a helper. It's probably 25 to 30 lawns a day. But route density uh, for me is how many times, uh, the biggest factor is how many hours are you logging on that lawnmower per week? In my opinion, if you have a lawn maintenance business, there's there's work that you can put on the lawnmower and then there's work managing the business, right? Phone calls, bids, estimates, all this other mess, right? And I think what most people get confused is that they're out uh, on the job, you know, they leave their house at eight in the morning, they come back at 5 p.m. and they think I had an eight, nine hour day. But if you actually looked at your lawnmower's hour meter, how long that unit was actually turned down and mowing grass, uh, what I have found is that most people are running that mower just two to three hours a day. I would argue that you're not generating revenue or business unless that mower is clocking hours on the hour meter. So what I got really good at and what I feel like I'm pretty good at and what I try to help you guys understand is the most powerful tool in my whole business is a stopwatch. And I talk about all this in my route density video is that if that, I know exactly how long it takes for every property we do, how long it takes my guys to do almost everything I got. You know, I was just sick and tired of hemorrhaging money. I was sick and tired of not making profit. I was sick and tired of having $100 days when I did 400 gross and netting 100. And I just said, what's the disconnect? And I got methodical a few years ago about how many minutes, how many hours are we driving? What's our shield time? I started counting things and tr treated my business like a real business, right? And so what I came to find out is that most guys are you know, averaging 100 to 300 hours on their lawnmower per year. I put five to 600 minimum on my mowers per year because that's when the mower is actually moving. We are actually generating good revenue for the company. Now, again, it's a balancing act. You gotta figure out what works best for you with returning those phone calls, doing those bids and estimates. For me, estimates are usually on Fridays and Saturdays on our downtime, right? But during the week and during the day, uh, my goal is to make sure that my mowers are moving, my trimmers and blowers are moving. So I would argue if you're working a 40 hour week, how many hours are your is your equipment actually moving? For me, what I've found is that if I can keep it moving 30, 35 hours a week, you'll start pulling in some really good uh, revenue generating days it's and interesting. weeks. interesting, so, so when you place your focus on the, the lever, Mm -hmm. that matters it's the only lever that matters so you In focus on mm -hmm. when you push this makes everything else move makes everything else move mm -hmm. 
But over this, you can bang on this over here all day and it won't. 100%. See, uh, estimates, for example, we all have to do estimates. I have to do estimates. And I'm, you know, making estimate phone calls and visiting properties at six o'clock at night, just like every other person in the summertime, right? Because you're just trying to pack it all in. But I know between eight and four, eight and five, the only thing that makes my company money is those pieces of equipment moving. Dude, I got to add to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, here in Michigan where we live, you live on what's called the west side. I'm on the east side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> east side? <laughs> <laughs> so we say there's a spot, a spot of the, on the west side where people on the east side that are contractors say that's where the money's at. Mm -hmm. And you get mixed opinions, right? Uh, for me and my business, it just didn't work out. I was mm -hmm. driving all the way there, hour there, hour back in traffic. And if you're not making the, the margins, then you're just, just a wash. You're wasting your time driving out. But for a contractor who's bidding right and he's doing specific things and he's got maybe route density in that area it's worth the drive sure but for me it took me five long years i got a video about this where i was like oh, no more i literally weeded out my last three four clients on the west side and i focused specifically in a um a five mile radius so we're doing landscape jobs our average ticket job is uh, it's between nine and eleven hundred fifty. In fact, it's a, it's about nine hundred and sixty dollars as our average ticket job. So we pull up, we work half a day, we go to another job where we work all day, and it's really worked out to just finally get rid of that shit and narrow down, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like I, I like emotion mm -hmm. and math. Did you have to get so pissed off and frustrated mm -hmm. that you sat down and did it? I think, no, for me personally, what happened was I listened to another guy, uh, you know, watching YouTube videos just like this. Yeah. And he literally exactly said what I said. He was uh, in real estate. And he said that if he wasn't connecting with a customer, in his example, whether it was on the phone, door to door, or maybe at his office on the phone making a sale, then he wasn't moving the needle forward. He wasn't selling a home. He said making cute postcards and flyers and marketing and driving the van around town and, and even negotiating contracts and deals and doing uh, walkthroughs and shows, showing of the homes and stuff like that. What he understood was that none of that mattered. The only time his company made money was when he was on the phone, when he was talking to a customer, hi, are you buying or selling a home in the next six months? And number three, I think was uh, negotiating the final contract purchase order because that's when he was able to sell the home at value. Bottom line thinking. That was it. He said, I hired assistants, I hired everything for everybody. And by the way, I'm a work in progress. I don't have it all figured out. But I will say that I know how many hours we track uh, on our units per year. And if you wanted to you know, do some mental math, I mean, that's, that's just where the money meets the road is that you have to know how many hours you're logging on, what's the productive work. I think, I think I've gotten really good at pulling the right lever. So what if people's phones are ringing like in a 10 mile radius? Now, like, how do I get more, you know, in one spot? Well, I think the first thing you have to do is set your boundaries, right? Yeah. Okay. And then number two, you're going to get, I've got a cousin, I've got a friend, I've got an aunt, I've got a brother, or I've got a, a neighbor, right? And if they're outside of those boundaries, I just say, I apologize. It's not part of our service area or our route. And we got to start there. Now, knowing that you take all that away, you think that you're going to suffocate your business or it might be like the way to not go. It sounds kind of counterintuitive. I don't want customers outside of this, but what it does is it allows you to free up that mental energy to double down on your marketing, your, uh, your advertising, uh, your route density is going to increase. You're going to fill in those cracks a lot quicker than you think or you say no to the like John C Maxwell say no to the good so you can say yes to the best sure 100% because the more you're in the same subs that you're in naturally it's gonna compound but most people you know what happens ups. yeah most what happens is that most people quit two three four five so years you in dominate that area and everybody knows who you are That's so it. you become the authority. obvious choice we come to authority in that subdivision the obvious choice. The obvious choice. <laughs> no, so, you're the authority. You done. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty smart. And let that compound year over year for ten years, uh, and it really uh, it can turn into a beautiful thing. That's where you're cutting thirty to forty lawns a day, uh, doing five hundred to a thousand dollars in revenue, no problem, uh, by four o'clock. Now we move, we hustle. Trust me, I do not look like this uh, eight to five in the summer months. We look nasty, grody, and it's crazy. But you know what? Um, for me, it wasn't. Uh, I had a uh, come to Jesus moment. It was just you know what? I'm always refining my business and learning from other. people people i watch youtube videos probably more than anybody quick left left yeah throw a curveball in. What, yeah what's up what, you listen to audiobooks yeah i love audiobooks what's a couple books you're listening to right now a couple books i'm listening to right now well it's always the one thing by gary v it's always the uh 10x uh rule by grant cardone uh and then anything Wait, i can the get, one thing one thing by uh, gary williams kelly gary, williams yeah, yeah. Or gary, one of the well yeah. uh the keller williams really uh 
So it's always Gary V, Grant Cardone, uh, Keller Williams, um, and anything by another guy named Darren Hardy. I don't Darren, he wrote uh, the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. Yeah, like Darren Hardy, I, I would name my book. first kid Darren. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Darren, if you watch this video, love your brother. <laughs> okay, back to what you're saying. Sure. I think I think where most people um, make the disconnect is that they're not patient. You got to. I mean, it's a business. It's not an overnight thing. Uh, again, we all, in the beginning you want to grasp for straws and take everything you can, and it's fine. But what happens is that most people don't refine and prune their business year over year, and they start. They, they let the business expand because you have a friend who's got a brother who's got a cousin and before you know it, you're 20 miles you're just away just taking from... whatever looks like money yeah you're you 20... feel you're doing the right thing and it, and it makes sense but it doesn't if you think long term because you got to know where your business is at but you don't know what you don't know like it's it's totally. not your fault and a lot of times it's just because you didn't have the information you 100% didn't, you didn't know someone else who went through it and mm -hmm. they said no 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 I learned this and that's yeah. what I love about this community what I love about YouTube what I love I just did about... a video I, I just did a video literally talking about how I had to prune 10 to 15% of my business because it was 25 minutes on a different side of town and it was tough to get rid of that because it was the first uh, part of my business 11 years ago. 2018 was a pruning year. Yeah. And then you say that. Well, because I had to, just like in anything in life, uh, you have to know what you want, when you want it, why you want it, and what you're willing to give up to get it. I'm sure you've heard something like that. Most people have heard something like that. Yeah. Well, I knew, I knew what I wanted, when I wanted it, and, and why. And I knew what I had to give up. I had to give away or get rid of, I actually sold it off, uh, it was another video, uh, how I got rid of 15 to 20% of my business because I wanted to double down and grow my route density where I live. This was 25 minutes around, uh, away from where I lived and it was my aunt that I picked up 10 years ago. And for me, I have to practice what I preach. I do what I say and you know what? It was just, it was profitable work but not as profitable as it could be. Because if I took that same day and I merged it into the route that I was already building over by where I live, and then we add snow removal, because I couldn't do snow removal for these people. They're 30 minutes away. So I'm literally, I'm making, you know, let's say this is worth $10,000. I was like, you ever heard the spider monkey analogy? No. You guys have never, the spider monkey analogy? Man, I live, I love learning all these little success things, right? So the spider monkey analogy, there's a little crazy little spider monkey, I have no idea what a spider monkey is, right? But what they do is they trap these guys in the wild is they take a gourd, they hollow it out, and they drill two little holes for the monkey to uh, slide their hand in. And what happens is that the, the gourd is tied down or whatever, right? And they put a little nut, a little seed, a little piece of fruit inside the gourd. Well, the monkey sticks its hands in and it grabs the, the, the fruit or the nut or the peanut. What happens is that it makes a fist. And once that fist is in there, it can't come out the same way it slid in, right? So what they do is they end up trapping the monkey and putting him in slavery. Because the monkey is so greedy, he's so selfish, he won't even let go of the nut right in the to save its own life. He won't let go. So I had to let go of 10 grand to help myself make 20 to 25 grand. And it's tough because, and, there was, and then you add in emotion, then you add in real life, then you add in bills, then you add in finances, then you add in rents due, right? And so I had to, it was a tough decision to get rid of a certain part of my business. It was worth ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. This is real life. But I know I've already replaced half of it, which made that decision a little bit easier because I picked up new clients where I already am. But I also knew all the opportunity that we were leaving on the table. And now I'm even more mad at myself thinking out loud because I should have did this five years ago. <laughs> so That's the way it always works. So ho hopefully it helps you guys out. It, it did for me. Um, I'm not the authority. Uh, there's a lot of guys that I'm friends with and they always look at my business and they're always analyzing things and helping me out with numbers. And I'm a student. But you know what? A lot of folks say that we did kind of figure out and we have a, a B plus is some pretty good route density. There's a lot of other stuff I can work on. And, you know, I don't have it all figured out. But honest yeah. answer is that. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this and what, about, what you think about uh, route density. What is the radius in which you work? How does that work for you? We want to know in the comments below so we can all sure. read it and learn from it. Yeah, and I don't think everybody has subdivisions, you know, like yeah. we do. You know, where we live, there's two million people within an hour. Yeah. Right. So if you're in the, you know, the boonies of, you know, Tennessee or something like that, that's fair. You might have to drive a little bit or go a half hour into town, mm -hmm. and that's fair. Yeah, I mean, that really makes a lot of sense.